In all submarine fleets, junior officers aspire to one thing above all others, to captain their own submarine. It remains one of the most challenging of commands. If there's one thing that we've learned, and I think that the United States Navy has learned as well, a submarine commanding officer cannot have a rule book. Okay, sure, there are some things which he can't do and some things which he must do, but he can't have a rule book. There, there is no set tactic or set thing to do in such and such a circumstance. He must use his own initiative and adapt, and adapt very quickly in split seconds to what's happening. At first, the Royal Navy did not believe it necessary to train its submarine captains. A good eye for shooting partridge was considered qualification enough. These days, computers and simulators test the would-be captain to the limit. But for a true sense of the pressure involved, there's nothing like the real thing. 30 miles outside Glasgow, a Royal Naval frigate is charging straight towards a Royal Naval submarine. This man wants to captain a submarine. Check ATV. Down. British me on the driveway. Get out of the way. Up. The, uh, down the, uh, 25 starboard. This man must decide whether he's capable of doing so. Look at the ball for two minutes. A British commanding oh, officer sorry. is trained in what's known as the perisher course. A perisher derives from an old expression, periscope school. But as a matter of fact, it's not such a bad expression because a lot of people perish along the way. No, get me up, down. Go on, engineer, do some speed. It's an utterly ruthless preparation for command, totally ruthless. Uh, and being British, we're more used to people being rude to us, very rude to us, than I think people are in the United States Navy as a whole. Come on, engineer. Very, very brutal. A lot of people fail. But at the end of it, you come out tough and able to face any tactical situation on your own, without support, and take full responsibility for it. I'm not saying that's not true of United States Naval officers as well. But it's my opinion that they were more inclined, certainly in the early days of nuclear power, to look back aft at that big kettle boiling up th back there than they were to look forward to their torpedo tubes and the enemy ahead. Submarine captains can polish their skills in the calmer atmosphere of the attack teacher. Computer scenarios simulate potential do-or-die situations. Also, deck, take her deep. Look, bow for clear to the right. Come on, two thirds. Two thirds, come on. Sounding one five zero fathoms below the keel. Check the chart. No, right, ten degrees rudder. Listen up in the fire control party. Just received uh, flash traffic due to the deteriorating uh, political situation in the Orange Republic and their perception of our disarmament. The uh, Orange Republic has uh, launched attack against the United States. A hot war exists. We're open ocean. Received uh, traffic indicating an Orange submarine is entering our area from the west. We've received orders to uh, prosecute and uh, attack any enemy forces in our area. Any questions? Carry on. The Navy has this idea and policy and tradition of true accountability, 100% accountability to the captain of a ship. He is responsible for the way the garbage is dumped all the way up to the way the torpedo is shot or the guns are shot. Annapolis is the premier officer training academy for the U.S. Navy. The courses are heavy in nuclear science, but some say too light in humanities and the art of war. Next, you see the 41st and last of the Polaris submarines. Uh, I'm a little bit biased toward this submarine myself because, frankly, I was the first skipper of it. In their final year, the midshipmen are addressed by senior officers. It's a recruitment exercise. Their example might inspire the fledgling officers to share their passion. Following that 
in the motif of any place, any time. Here's a USS Archer fish. In Given Lamont, some qualities that I would look for is first, you gotta know your job. You gotta know your stuff. You gotta know your weapons. You gotta know your ship. We have a uh, very small bearing rate indicating that the contact is either distant or that we're on a lead, possible overlead line of sight. Range 10 to 12,000 yards. Carry on. Stand by to mark minute, three, two. The good skippers I had when I was young allowed me to make torpedo approaches, to make landings when only skippers were making landings. And when you're going in with a current either against you or with you, and you've got to kind of shoot the thing on the fly. Well, sometimes you hit the pier pretty hard. Sometimes the pier almost goes over. Some people have hit their own automobile at the head of the pier. Uh, but these are things that really give you great confidence. Uh, in, in, when you're the person doing it. Well, oh, I'm steady course, three, four, five. Steady course, three, four, five. I'm on. We're close 2,000 yards. We're two, five, six, point six. Copy one. Under the captain's eye, the team maneuvers into the best position to fire. Here's the best solution from prime mate. There are certain things that you have to be vitally interested in and involved in, and uh, one of them is safe navigation of the ship. You must not run aground. The other one is safe navigation is, pertains to hitting another ship. You will not have an, a collision. Either one of those can ruin your whole day, not to mention a career. Get on my back. <laughs> Lie flat on me. Put your feet on my feet. And don't kiss me on the ear. Even at 70 years of age, you can still Lie have the back. right stuff. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> There are some old adages that some people print up and put around, like, know your stuff, be a man, take care of your men. And that's not too bad. I mean, you've got to take care of your crew, you've got to know your crew, you've got to be human, and you've got to be able to laugh at your mistakes, because you're going to make them. All your people are going to make them, and you may make the most colossal ones. So if you've been smiling at them, maybe you can laugh at yourself a little bit. I weigh 120. <laughs> Well, it gives you something to work on. <laughs> okay.